do you remember my last video? <laughs> That's absolutely wonderful. And perhaps you also remember the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. <laughs> If you remember both my last video and the movie Groundhog Day, this video intro and the whole video itself probably doesn't need any further explanation. <laughs> you can learn from your mistakes, they say. And if you have done something that went totally wrong, you will probably not do it again. Because if you have done something where you have experienced that it turned out as a fail, then you can think, okay, <laughs> it was a fail. So it was good that I have tried it out, but I will not do it again because it was a fail. Yeah, just a fail. <laughs> but what shall I say? If you are a junk journaler, then things are completely different, right? And it can happen that you have done something and you have experienced that it was a fail. But the next day, you're going to do it again. And, and if you are like me, then you will probably understand this whole thing. Welcome, it's Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel, Junk Journal Art, and welcome to this video where I'm trying something <laughs> that I have already done. And I know that this is probably <laughs> going to become another fail, but I can't resist. I have to do this whole thing again. This video is a little bit different than the other one because in the other video I have told you about my date with a really, really handsome young man. And I have told you about this really, yeah, it was a confusing day. It started really, really nice and really exciting. But then it turned into a disaster because he has offered me some really weird green stuff while we had a really nice picnic in a park. And he said to me that he wants me to try this really weird dried stuff. And I was wondering why <laughs> all of those weird things could even happen but then I thought okay this whole thing was perhaps not not that bad I mean this experience uh, yeah is that the word yes this <laughs> this experience was perhaps a little weird but uh, why can't we learn from experiences that we have made why can't we learn and do something else the next time which then can turn into a success i mean why shouldn't that be possible so today <laughs> i have taken out <laughs> Excuse me, the cinnamon is really oh, somehow in the air here now. <laughs> Today I'm taking a second journal and I'm really hoping for something amazing. <laughs> Because if you, haven't, uh, if you have seen my last video, you have also seen that my journal turned into yeah, paper pulp. And something really weird while it was in my washing machine. If you haven't seen my last video, perhaps you want to check it out. 
And then <laughs> perhaps also makes sense what I'm doing here today. But I thought I can't handle this whole situation of having something that seemed to be a fail. But I mean, if you follow me for a longer time, then you already know me and you know that I, yeah, I'm not this person who can live with fails. I always have to try something for, you know, multiple times to be really sure <laughs> that it is a fail and that, that it really can't work. work. And I also have to say, Mm, those things that are like real fails I haven't experienced those so often so I'm hoping that today's experiment will give me something really really awesome I bought some turmeric curcuma is this called in German and I think the English word is turmeric Holy moly, because I have seen some people um, use this for dyeing paper. And what I want to do today is I want to take this whole journal after. Whoo, holy moly, stay here on my desk, please. <clears throat> the spray wanted to roll away. I want to take this whole journal and wrap it to make a little like sandwich and I want to put that into a pot and then cook that for a while on my stove. The experiment with the washing machine obviously went totally wrong. Uh, when uh, If you haven't seen the other video I will link it down below for you so that you can rewatch it. But this fail with the other journal doesn't stop me from trying this and trying this thing for a second time. So what I'm going to do here <clears throat> is I'm going to take some more die cuts. In my other video I've used wildflower die cuts, but you know, because of this shock of the date and this shock with this really weird dried stuff, <laughs> this green stuff, <laughs> I thought let's use some other die cuts today. So I have chosen some butterflies and some moths and that stuff because I think for this experiment it doesn't really make a difference. So why not try those? And what I also have here on my desk uh, the doilies that I had put into the other journal as well. So these are the ones that came out from my washing machine after the this other experiment. So um, and w after they had dried, they turned into a really weird color, which I don't like so much. So I'm hoping. That if I use them here today again, that I can get perhaps another color that I like better. And <clears throat> the, let's say, main idea behind this is to take a whole journal and dye all of those pages at the same time. I'm really randomly adding some distress oxide sprays and spray stains i have the colors peacock feathers evergreen bow weathered wood hickory smoke lost shadow and wild honey here on my desk and additionally the turmeric some rosemary because this is of course you know rosemary and some cinnamon and some dried basilicum bas basilico i still still don't know the the right word in english but i think you know what i mean i think you can basically take whatever you have 
I'm trying to use some dried things like this turmeric and the cinnamon and also <clears throat> some liquid things even if I really don't know what's going to happen to all of those colors I'm hoping that the sprays soak into the paper now and that with cooking this the colors get like mixed but I'm hoping that they don't get one color yeah perhaps you remember how this towel looked before I have used it for trying this other experiment with the other journal the towel was like a light brown and now it's completely this green and there's really a weird green and I'm hoping that that doesn't happen with <clears throat> the pages here now. I'm assuming that if the, the experiment with the washing machine had worked, that then perhaps also everything would have turned into one weird color. But yeah, if I don't try it, then I don't know what could happen here. I'm spritzing these things not to all of the pages, but you know, you can see this really randomly. So I will quickly finish this. And it's also really important that you spritz a lot of this to your hands. <laughs> and oh, perhaps you want to know that as well. <clears throat> In this journal, there are mainly coffee dyed papers some you know different kinds of paper like normal copy paper which i have coffee dyed some grid paper and i also have some eco prints in here also some digital paper from my shop this for example as well and i'm really wondering what's going to happen with these colors the digital paper i have printed uh, on photo paper, matte photo paper, and I'm really wondering what's going to happen because normally if you um, print your digital paper to matte photo paper, then the whole thing is like waterproof. Yeah. <clears throat> Here, for example, this was also, <laughs> it is still a print um, on matte photo paper. This is from my frozen broccoli printable. And when I spritz the spray here, the ink from my printer doesn't bleed. But I'm really interested what happens uh, when I have this and put that into water for a while and cook that. That could be something interesting, I think. So now I want to... Ooh, want to have this here and then what I also have here is this this is what was left over from the washing machine experiment this is basically the rest of the cover of the other journal here you can see the spine from the outside and the spine from the inside and after this had dried it turned into this really weird color and to be honest I don't like this I really don't like this color anymore. When it was wet, it was way more beautiful. So what I want to try is, I want to take this and wait, how can I do that? Let's sprinkle some of the turmeric here. How much? I don't know. And some cinnamon. And let's then put this on here. So. Um, the spine of the new journal is now here on the left and here's the spine of the other journal and I want to try to put this here against the other part like so then turn that around open this here for a moment throw some of this stuff in here some cinnamon as well ay, ay, ay. and then let's close this hoping that we can get some of that color to the cover and you know perhaps we should also let's also put some on here and perhaps you see this and you often have eco dyed your papers 
with something like this and you are wondering what is she doing then please don't laugh at me <laughs> i have never done something like this before so now i'm wrapping this into this towel i'm trying to get this relatively tight and i'm also thinking shall i put some oh how is the english word yeah it's alum i'm thinking if i should put some alum into the water as well because that is what you would do if you would um, eco dye your papers as well i know that that has like a different reason yeah when you when you eco dye your papers with real plants and that stuff things from nature then you put this alum into your water to to um get the colors from the plants i think that is the reason isn't it but i'm thinking if it makes i mean i will never know it because if i put it in there and i see my result then i probably don't know what the alum made and what not but I think I want to try that because I'm assuming that the color from this turmeric also comes out better with alum in the water. Let's put some alum and also some vinegar and all that stuff that we would use for eco dyeing as well into the pot and then cook that. I think that makes the most sense. So <laughs> welcome to my experimental kitchen. This is just some water and I want to bring this to boil now and I also want to add some vinegar. This is just some vinegar that we use to make some like salad, like, you know, dressing the sauce for a salad, not sauce. I think it's dressing in English as well, isn't it? I'm not so sure, but <laughs> this is used for, for salad, but I guess you can also... use any other vinegar that you have then i have also ooh, taken out my alum here how much you shall add i have no idea i'm going to add approximately two oh let's make two and a half of these like bigger spoons and while I was searching for my alum, I thought, shall we perhaps also add some coffee into this mixture here? I, I just thought, why not? Uh, I have this instant coffee here. And I'm mainly doing this because of the smell. Because um, I don't like the smell of vinegar. And to be honest, I also don't like the smell of alum. I have the feeling with eco dyed papers, it's sometimes that the paper afterwards, when it's um, dry, I mean after the whole eco dyeing process, it really smells like alum and I don't like that. And because of that, I've just added this coffee here. So then I'm going to take my bundle here, put that in here carefully, make sure that you don't spritz this mixture to yourself, Louisa. <laughs> oh, and it's, it's not covering the whole thing, but I think I can also, uh, you know, like turn it around or add more of this mixture. Let me quickly try to whoo, turn this around so that it can soak from all sides. And now, I'm going to bring this to boil and then I'm going to let that simmer for how long <laughs> I have absolutely no idea but I think that it takes a relatively long time until this liquid gets soaked into the journal yeah so I think we need a minimum of an hour I, I guess because you know, with eco dyeing, it's the same. When you have your sandwich, then you need a relatively long time until everything can soak um, into all of your papers. So let's let's wait an hour and then let's take it out. And I'm so hoping that I don't get paper, paper pulp here as well. So 
let's hope for the best. So I've just taken out my camera from the tripod so that you can see how it looks from here. I had some problems to <laughs> film here in my kitchen, but this is how it looks now. And perhaps we can also look um, how the color of the water is going to change and then make some decisions because, you know, when the turmeric is coming out from the pages and the paper, and no, sorry, the water turns yellowish, then we probably know that something has happened inside the journal as well. Okay, so it's only half an hour later instead of an hour later what I originally had planned, but I'm hoping that I can show you that here. Look, the water has turned really, really orangey. I'm assuming that that is from the turmeric, so it was really brown in the beginning, and now it's this color. And I'm expecting, you know, the turmeric went out. Mm, I don't know what happened in the very inside of the journal. If there is already some liquid, if the water has reached the inside of the journal, I don't know that. But the turmeric has started to come out. That can also, of course, be the turmeric which we've put, you know, directly below the towel, um, there where the cover is. But if the journal is completely wet inside, then this is probably the best point to take that out because I don't want to have the colors inside of the journal mixed up completely. So I'm going to take this out, let that cool down a little bit so that I can touch it. Then I will open this carefully to check if the journal is wet inside and if the water has come to the inside or not. And then we can see if we want to put it into the pot again or if we want to leave it. And hopefully, I mean, <laughs> when I open it now, hopefully it is still intact. <sighs> Did I say that I want to let this cool down? I can't wait. Please don't do this at home. <laughs> Please just let it cool, okay? I will be very careful, so don't be scared. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay. Mm -hmm. The cover feels relatively stiff. This is wet. But the turmeric is still like powder. Can you see that? <laughs> okay, so this is really, you know, powdery, but I think that really doesn't matter. We can let that dry and then we can uh, perhaps uh, rub that off. Ooh, I have hot. Okay, but it's it's completely wet inside. That is good. I don't want to open it now completely. I'm really sorry that you can't see here anything now, but. I'm trying to decide if I want to put it in again or if I want to leave it like it is now. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. Okay. And I can see that the cover is coming off here. And I can see that this front paper of the book, I mean, um, the the paper, which is which was glued to the book cover. That is coming off, but that is not the problem. We can still glue that back there later. But what the heck shall I do now? This is really powdery, but when it's powdery, like this feels like nearly dry, but when it's dry here, the pages are wet then it probably doesn't get more wet and the staining process is finished probably 
and here it's also it looks really really gorgeous so why shall I put that back in there if this is already nice and since this cover so the other cover is coming off as well here you can see what I just tried to explain Mm, this is an old book cover which I've used to make the journal cover and this what you can see here is the paper which originally was glued here and that was the inside paper here of the cover of the original book I've used to make the journal. I think it would be would have been a good idea uh, if I had taken a thinner paper for the cover and then after gluing this here sew around here so that this piece of paper or cardboard book cover material um, can't leave the fabric yeah so this only has fallen apart because of the fact that I haven't sewn here and that here just was glue but what I really like is this area here look there the paper went a little bit like like so the head looks really really cool and I'm also trying to think about a way to conserve is that a word conservieren is the German word so that I can can have the this texture here but I mean, this is like food, yeah. So <laughs> how could I do that? If I remove this, then I would have the problem that everything is yellow, like on the other side. <laughs> the spine turned out just amazing. Look, that is just just cool. So I'm going to take this and put this away because it's loose already. So I can also press this down a little bit and let's do that on the front as well. Let's take this. Oh, I can't remove it completely, can I? Oh yes, it works. To see what's going on here inside. And that is also something, look here, look at this gorgeous texture and this color, but how can I make this work that I can l let this leave here I mean I, I'm i just thinking about a medium like for example translucent texture paste or something but what about mold I have no idea this turned out really really nice I'm so not already uh, please basket give me a pellet knife and if something is tearing here, I let it tear, hoping that this, you know, sticks down there. Because this here gives nice things as well. Ooh, look. Oh, it's relatively subtle, but it's, it's nice, isn't it? The pages feel relatively intact. But here, for example, it's completely dry. This is also dry. Or let's say damp here I can see a tiny little bit oh how is this going to look when it's dry I wish I was a fortune teller can you see this really subtle impression here it's lighter than here and also in these little gaps there and I'm surprised how easy I can flip the pages this was my eco dyed paper so this hasn't come from today's experiment the cinnamon is really loose here <laughs> Okay, let's analyze this page because here is relatively much 
of the turmeric. Here it's relatively wet and we can see how much um, staining the turmeric has left here. That is relatively much. And I also think <laughs> that it depends on the paper you use. Yeah, I mean, that is probably always the case. Okay, let's see what happened with the doilies. Can see something here, but I guess that it, this is only like a wet impression, do you know? And that this will disappear. Here on the other side there's nothing. And here's a little bit more. Ooh, what is... Oh my goodness, what is that? Holy moly! Oh my goodness! <laughs> this is from my... Magnolia Coffee Birds kit, one of the background pages with the feathers. Look how cool this turned out. But why? I mean, here's nothing on it that must have happened just with little spaces of air or something. Look, who? But why is it so dark? I mean, that's what I was uh, saying in the beginning. This is the photo paper. And the color is just amazing. <laughs> okay. Why don't we see so much of this doily? Someone please explain that. Okay. Here we can see a bit of the butterfly. Here even more. Ooh, and the butterfly itself. Look, oh my goodness, that is just amazing. Oh my goodness, who would think about coloring this perspective butterfly? I mean, that is the name of the die cut, yeah? This is a die cut by Zizix and Tim Holtz. The name is Perspective Butterfly. Who would come to the idea to color this die cut like this? I would never, never in my life come to the idea to do it like this. And since this is, I guess, also oxidized a little bit, when this is dry, this is going to be absolutely amazing. So this is definitely not a fail. Even if we're, if my journal will explode in a second <laughs> for some reason, then this is not a fail because of the butterfly there. Look. Why is this so dark? Heh. I mean, the paper is like, you know, black watercolor paper, but why, why is that so dark? Don't know. Oh! <gasps> Why the heck is that so dark? How cool is that? The closer we come to the center, the better those results are. Can someone please explain that? Can even see a little bit here. What is going to happen if I... Oh, if I put... Holy crap, my, my brain is spinning around. What is going to happen if I now... Oh, if I put... Uh, the die cuts back in between of the pages where I think there could happen some more stuff... And then I put it back into the pot. What is going to happen then? And obviously, I mean, all of these like crazy pages, yeah? This year, for example, can you see that? All of this crazy stuff happens on photo paper with um, digital p uh, files printed on it. So uh, printable, printed on huh, matte photo paper. And this is obviously the oxidation. I have to have that in mind. I can later on watch my video again. Louise, everything you say here, you have on camera. <laughs> Don't freak your freak. Look here. The same. Matte photo paper. 
weathered wood probably on the other side and then we get got something like this I definitely have to do another experiment in a second when I have finished this because I mean perhaps I have found out something new here this is from my dried gatherings paper I mean at this point I don't know how this will look when it's dry yeah? perhaps it will change completely but it's definitely worth some experiments that is something that I can already see oh look look oh my goodness how beautiful is that I have to let me put that onto a white background so that you can see that better look how amazing is this oh <laughs> I'm freaking out here in a second <laughs> okay so the string yeah nothing mm. okay so but what we can see is that the oxide thing that was not very professional Louisa the oxide part of this whole thing left the most interesting results. So that means we now have all of the options that we could imagine. That means we are going to take... What are we going to take? Let's start here in the back. Let's first think about this whole thing. Um, we had wild honey, so we are going to take wild honey oxide spray. And I also have the re -inker, so I'm going to take that out as well, because that is probably even more extremely. Then um, we had peacock feathers. So I'm going to take out peacock feathers oxide spray. Unfortunately, I don't have the re inker of that color, but that doesn't matter. What else do we have there? We have ah, pine needles, but that is a little bit too. Uh, let's try <laughs> Uncharted Mariner instead. Mm, weathered wood oxide spray, but I want to go a little bit more into this, but I can't. I wanted to go a little bit more into this orange direction, but I can't because I don't have any oxide medium, which is like in in that uh, direction. What about crackling campfire? Yeah, why don't we try that? And what we also could do is, I mean, we are experimenting here. Let's take on some mica stain sprays. Let's take flickering candle. What else yellowish do I have? I have a harvest moon. Mm, some orange, please. If you're wondering why I'm breathing so weird <laughs> I'm trying to reach these bottles on my shelf there so I have taken out Jacko Lantern and Malt Cider and I think that was the first time that I have uh, pronounced this right <laughs> um, but we need some turquoise mica as well if we want to do this so let's take shiny bobble Mm, yeah okay let's see and now <laughs> I'm going to take these because I don't know yet how I will go on with these and I'm going to put them out of my way but somewhere where they can't stain my table <sighs> the plan is uh, let's take some wild honey oxide spray <coughs> because you know, we have the turquoise here and I want to go with the color that gives contrast. And now I'm going to spritz the butterfly, take him and I'm going to place him but up, upside down so that the 
oxide ink spray is now touching this and then we can perhaps add a little bit of the mica spray as well and let's see what is going to happen and it would be really amazing if something could happen here but yeah here there's a half of the perspective butterfly i can see that so i'm trying to line this up again here so that he the butterfly is laying exactly there where he was before um, and now let's add some contrast with what first of all let's dip a uh, drip some of the oxide refiller here and now in this step I'm trying to look which colors I already have here and follow those colors that are here already and since I know that this is probably going to look really weird because you know it's very concentrated and I don't want to have these like blobs Let's add some crackling campfire oxide spray to make this run over the page a little bit. This page speaks brown somehow. I wish I had scorched timber. Thank FedEx that it's not here yet <laughs> so let's use ground espresso I mean that is definitely not the same but <laughs> let's see and to get perhaps something like a color bridge let's add some ground espresso here to the next pages as well But perhaps I should take ground espresso oxide spray because we've learned that the oxide spray is doing the most interesting things. And here there was a page, uh, here, a photo paper. <laughs> I just thought why don't we take some lace to hold this together because when it gets a nice color then we have a nice stained lace in the end as well and I'm assuming I mean of course that's going to happen that the fabric is going to become stained as well so um, then this lace later on is matching the fabric <laughs> hopefully so I'm going to make this sandwich and then I will put that back into my pot which is still in my kitchen and then I will let this be in there for <laughs> perhaps I guess I will do 45 minutes or so because I mean it is already wet isn't it and perhaps that is then good <laughs> <laughs> 